Hi, this is Gali Gofarb and welcome to my Gorilla Life Coaching videos. Five times a week I talk about a quote that can help you move your life to a better, healthier and happier place for you and I hope you gain a lot of value from these videos. So how are you doing today? Well, I hope you're feeling in a loving mood today because the quote of the day and today I'm going to be talking about relationships. And the quote of the day is, the most important thing in life is to learn how to give out love and to let it come in by Maury Schwartz. From a spiritual perspective, we are whole the way we are without the need for anyone apart from us to complete us. We are whole, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't accept and let love come in as well as give it to others. In fact, there is a lot of evidence from research that shows that for most people, a close-knit relationship will make them happier. We need to give out love as well as to accept love from someone special in order to feel our happiest. When in a healthy relationship, we find it easier to venture out into the world and do things that we truly desire and fulfill uh, our purpose here completely. And this is something that we may not feel the courage. Now, I'm not saying that, that, this, is not, that this is true for everyone. But for most people, they feel that they have more courage to do something when they have a steady foundation, a steady base that supports them and provides them with a secure foundation to go out and, and explore the world and do the things that they really want to do. Now, this close-knit re relationship need not be with a specific partner, but in most cases, a partner is best for this. So you could have a, a close-knit relationship with another family member, but having a partner is, uh, is has these additional um, benefits. Okay, so why are there so many people today when we know that it is so beneficial to have a relationship who are running away from commitment and feel that they do not want the, the confines of a relationship? Well, for this, we want to look at history. The human species became dominant and strong due to our relationships with one another and the help and support that the group provided for us against the difficulties we came across in daily life and survival. We would share commitments and help each other when our survival was threatened. So the need to be in a close-knit relationship is in our genes and has been passed down from generation to generation to ensure our survival. So how is it that there are still many people who seem to steer away from relationships and actually fear that their independence is being suppressed when they get in a, into a close-knit relationship. Well, the reason for this comes from a different survival mechanism that is more recent. In the new era, where wars were common, a person uh, who was on their own without the burden of a family or someone close to them who may harm their chances of survival actually increased their chances of survival when they were alone. This led to lo the lone wolf behavior. And this behavior makes a person actually fear a close-knit relationship because of the burden and lack of freedom to do what is necessary to do in order to survive when the need, uh, when the need comes. So it, it, it basically gives one more mouth to feed and one more person to care for and one more person to be responsible for. Now this, at times of war and uncertainly, uncertainty, uh, would reduce the likelihood of survival. And a close relationship could have actually harmed a, a person's chances of survival in such extremely adverse conditions. But for most of us, this is not the case anymore. Nowadays, a relationship has gone back to its natural form and the natural benefits that it has the potential to provide are available again. Nowadays, a close-knit relationship has the potential to be much more satisfying than when being alone. And it definitely does take some time to get used to for a person with genetics from a family that was previously in a difficult environment. I can understand this. This type of person will be scared of commitment and fear that, the, that a relationship will impinge on their independence, something that they view is crucial for survival. They may fear that someone uh, or something, something will be taken away from them and uh, this something will reduce their chances of survival. The need to share is also something that reduces 
the chances of survival. So these people, commitment phobes, as I call them, uh, um, do not like really to share their things. These types of, of people also like to hoard stuff and search for faults constantly with their partner, as if screening them for a situation where they will be stuck with them in some kind of war zone. <laughs> At least a quarter of the current population are living their life like this, and unfortunately, it not only makes them unhappy, although most of them won't uh, either be aware of it or won't uh, confirm this, but it also leads to the unhappiness of many people around them. Commitment phobes miss out on a loving, supporting relationship, and this is very unfortunate. A commitment phobe tends not to care so much for the emotional and intimate needs of their partners, or even ridicule their partner for having such emotional needs, because having these needs is something that would have hindered their survival chances in the past. They block out such emotions from them. Even though they do have them within them, they block them out. And this in turn reduces their partner's levels of happiness, which comes back to reduce their own level of happiness. And it's like a downward spiral. So we are actually uh, very emotionally dependent on our partners and this is natural and normal and was meant to be like this to ensure that we stay together through the rough times. If your partner does not understand, your level of bonding will be reduced if they don't understand the importance of this, which may give a, a short-term good feeling to uh, any commitment folk that they release the relationship but in the long term it has a negative effect even on a, a commitment phobe as well as on the relationship that may be to, uh, torn apart so if you or your partner are commitment phobes the only way to change this is through a genuine wish for change because of the understanding of the benefits that a relationship can bring you then and only then can real and lasting change begin and a commitment phobe can become more and more secure. It is healthy and natural to want intimacy with someone. This is normal and natural behavior. No one should feel bad for having the wish to bond with someone. But a commitment phobe is not, it, although he has, they may have these feelings, he or she may have these feelings, but they are suppressed feelings. And a commitment phobe may feel that they are strong when compared to a more needy partner, but this is not true. It is absolutely normal to desire intimacy in a relationship and close bonding. And there is nothing wrong with a person who desires this. They are in fact showing the other person that they trust them to fulfill their needs for closeness and support. It is not a weakness to need support. No person has ever succeeded in a big way without the support of someone close to them or without a, a support network. It is also, it is actually false uh, to believe that you can do it all on your own. You can't. You need a support system and nothing could be better than having a support system with someone uh, that you truly care for and that they truly care for you back and having them within your home <laughs> together. Someone to go on the path to success and happiness and fulfillment together with you. There couldn't be anything better. In a relationship with a commitment phobe, you may feel that there is a constant wall between you. You may not understand their behaviors at times and they will not want the closeness with you and always walk uh, ahead of you instead of walking beside you and push you away that they don't want um, touch or, or it... it shows up in different ways for different uh, commitment folks but they also tend to do the the same things that they do with their partners also with their children as if no one is good enough for them as if no partner can be good enough for them and they will put their own needs and desires before your own and may even ignore your your own needs now some some are extremely to the other side and they um, of course they care for their children if they have children but they will tend to have the same uh, reaction uh, walking a few strides ahead of the, their children or uh, avoiding touch for the most part of the day they they will put um, they, they also tend to ignore their partner's needs they look for negative behaviors in their partners instead of focusing on what the relationship does provide for them 
and uh, love is not a feeling that they are comfortable with they may want to push it away when you want to show affection but don't blame yourself for this if you are with a commitment folk this is just how they are with all of their partners not only with you now fighting about this with your partner will not solve the problem and will only conf confirm to the commitment phobe that their idea of closeness in a relationship is a really bad idea they will always withdraw at, from any closeness no matter who they are with unless they will decide to change one day and release these fears and this change is not easy but it's definitely worthwhile for them and of course for anyone around them now a healthy relationship is one when none of the partners feel threatened by their part their partners happiness and success and both partners see their partners happiness as their own responsibility even if a change in their partner could affect them negatively in the short term they are still accepting and loving towards their partner and they don't interfere with their partners work or their other uh, endeavors a healthy relationship is when both partners are available for each other and say what's on their mind in a courageous way and in an encouraging and loving way in a healthy relationship both partners are honest towards each other and do not fear telling the truth and when a problem does arise they focus on win-win solutions yes uh, there are such relationships and you definitely want to be in such a relationship if you understand the value of having a close-knit relationship with someone in a healthy relationship where both partners are really supportive everyone wins and the threat that is perceived uh, for, for uh, this relationship will slowly dissipate this type of relationship is possible when a commitment phobe it's it's even possible with a commitment phobe when they uh, commitment phobe understands where their behaviors come from and what the benefits are from making a change to being engaged in a healthier relationship structure relationships should be comfortable supportive encouraging close and fun if you do not have this in your current relationship and you are not a commitment phobe then you may think about breaking away from this relationship and get, get over the addiction of this type of relationship roller coaster and find a more supportive partner that is relaxed with regards to commitment find a partner who desires to be in a healthy relationship and doesn't feel overwhelmed by such a commitment if you choose to stay in a relationship with a commitment folk you may feel constantly rejected and you will find yourself in a victim mentality constantly blaming yourself for something that has nothing to do with you there are just these fundamental differences with your outlook on relationships that comes from genetic deeply embedded thought patterns that come from survival mechanisms and it is hard to change these thought patterns but they can be changed with a true desire to become more at ease with other people and better in relationships and this will certainly make everybody's life richer and happier in all senses being in a close-knit relationship will make you less rigid and much more fulfilled it is actually my relationship with my two daughters that helped me become better and more understanding about relationships they needed me to be understanding and loving towards them no matter what they did my daughters are have a mental disability and uh, they have lots of difficulties but this is how a healthy relationship should be my daughters didn't nev never did anything on purpose even when they ruined the furniture flooded the house many times even slapped me in the back I never held a grudge towards them even if they woke me up at 2 in the morning or made a serious mess all over the place I would have them I would I would still stick by them and be helpful to them no matter what I was feeling or how hard my day was I would understand that it is never their fault and I accepted them as they are and this is how any relationship can thrive when both partners accept the other just as they are of course there will never be perfection in any in a relationship but if you can accept the other person's shortcomings and give them the support and encouragement and be honest with them in all of your communications and leave out the games then the relationship will be powerful and will be healthy and will provide you comfort in any in, in every field of your life loving relationships 
may take time at first until they even out and balance out. At first they may be like this uh, until you can reach calm waters. But this will happen relatively quickly if you are willing to make some changes in your point of view on relationships and make healthy bonding become part of you. So as I always do with these videos, I will provide you with a question that you want to ask yourself to give you uh, a perspective on how you can move your life towards a better place. And the question of the day is, can I commit to having a healthy, honest, encouraging and accepting relationship? And am I willing to accept this type of love back in return? Now, yes, perhaps this type of love may be boring in the beginning compared to having the roller coaster ride you will have with a commitment phobe. I know this. But with time, you will enjoy a tr the true benefits of having a ha happy and fulfilling relationship that you deserve. So, I recommend writing down the question in a notebook, especially prepared for, this, uh, for these coaching sessions, and then you can look back on them. And... Uh, have some introspection and see where you are moving your life in which direction so the affirmation of the day that I want to close this video with is I am in a, in a secure and loving relationship where I communicate my needs and feelings in a loving way with my partner and they respect and appreciate me deeply I am in a secure and loving relationship where I communicate my needs and feelings in a loving way with my partner and they respect me and appreciate me deeply. Now tell this to yourself as many times a day as you remember to do so because an affirmation has the power to make your life better, healthier and much more uh, enjoyable. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you liked this video and I hope you uh, gained a lot of value from it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please also subscribe to my channel. And um, also visit my website at thegorilladiet.com for anything to do with natural health and ha natural living. Thank you very much. <laughs>